Today, we're gonna be starting our what's for dinner for the week. And we did something very similar to last Sunday. In fact, it's almost identical. But I'm gonna flip you around and show you what we have. Okay, so we did the little mini burgers again, but this time I did Gouda and Havarti cheese instead of what we did last time. And they're thinner slices too. Those are really good. They're kind of addictive. That's why we're doing it again. I did the same kind of little pizza bites with the crescent rolls, we found that we liked that a lot more than the pizza dough. And then we did the peppers again, but this time instead of sausage stuffed, and these are not the kind we do on the grill, that we don't, we don't smoke these. But instead of the sausage in them, we put some bacon because we had some cooked bacon. So that is our dinner for tonight. Okay guys, it is Monday, July 4th. And we had taken some ribeyes, which I forgot we had ribeyes. I thought it was all T-bone. Out of the freezer. We've had them in there for a long while. Got them on sale. And so we kept them <laughs> for a special occasion, I guess. But anyways, got um, some ribeyes, some asparagus. We've got two packs of that that we cooked on the grill with bacon, salt, and pepper. Kind of tastes like boiled peanuts to me. Why do you laugh? It's true. And then some stovetop potatoes with onions and some fresh cucumber. Hey guys, today is Tuesday and we are going to do some air fried drumsticks. Uh, we've not done this before. What we've done over here is we have put some with salt. Whoa, you can't see it. Uh, seasoned salt, black pepper, and hot sauce. And then these are um, Italian dressing. And I like using Italian dressing because it has oil in it, but it also has lots of herbs and stuff. And this Sazon seasoning, the Sazon Tropical. That's all that we put in there was that. It's kind of got a blur, okay. We put that in that one and we've been letting them marinate. And I've got my air fryer here and I'm gonna go ahead and get it. Let's see, I'm gonna set y'all up. But I'm gonna let it preheat and then um, I'll put those in. And I've never done air fried drumsticks. I don't know if I said that already. I've already tried to record this one time and messed up. But anyway, I've never tried air fried drumsticks. So we're gonna try that today just because we wanted to try something different. We're gonna do that with um, some air fried, or maybe I'll just do them in the oven, I don't know yet, uh, fries and, or maybe I can talk Jeff into frying them, I doubt it because he's busy rebuilding this, which the drawers are the same, but he's putting the, he's changing the top and he's putting like a flip up top over here. Anyway, I'll show y'all that later on. Actually, I can show you the top. We, him mostly, but we made this butcher block type situation. But um, we built this and he planed it and sanded it. We glued it together first. Well, no. First he cut down pallet wood. That's what you use, right, Jeffrey? Yeah. He tore apart pallets. He um, cut them down to the size he wanted, and then we glued it together in sections. We had three sections. He ran it through the planer, and then he glued it together again. And then, what did you do next? Because I didn't see that part. You cut it, to, but how'd you get it smooth? You just sanded it? Okay, he just sanded it, and he cut it to size, and he's got this little part down here, and it's rounded. But that's going to be the little part that comes up on this side. And he built this out so that it would do right. But it's going to come out on the side. Lift up that one. I know that you're dirty and stuff. Lift up that one. This is how it's going to work. Except, let's see. Instead of having one leg like this one, it's going to have two legs. So he's working on that. Um, how much more are you doing to it today? That's it. <laughs> That's as far as he can get today. But this right here is a piece of granite. 
and he's gonna have that in there for me to use um, and we've got to put a back on that hopefully this will get painted today but anyways that's not what this video is about it's about cooking and like I said we're gonna try out my new air fryer and um, see how it works out never air fried drumsticks so we don't know but I'm gonna put them in and I'm gonna turn them on for it said 18 to 21 minutes so or 18 to 22 one or the other I'm gonna put it in for 18 minutes and cook them up see how it works out we'll see okay so I got this hot and I'm just gonna put them in there I don't have any way to show y'all this exactly but I'm just gonna put um, this flavor in first and I didn't take the skin off oh that's touching the side okay I'm gonna try to put them in there maybe I can do it like this maybe y'all can see what I'm doing I don't know this may be worse but I think I can fit them all in whenever um we open these I thought there was four in each packet I didn't know there was five but five is okay five fits okay five fits and still has space around them and everything that works okay so I'm gonna put it in and then flip down my viewfinder and then it's supposed to be on 360 for 18 to 21 minutes so I'm just gonna do 18 and turn it on and let it cook okay so we let it go for the 18 minutes and it wasn't done so we did it for another five it wasn't done we did it for another five now they seem like they're done hopefully they're done if they're not i'm gonna freak out <laughs> what jeff and i both think they're done they look done so we're going to take them out of the air fryer that's the way they look and we have a pan in the oven that we're going to put just our chicken and fries well, all the things we're cooking, we're going to put on there because we've got it on keep warm. And since we have to do the chicken in stages and the fries in stages, it's going to take some time. So, I'm going to take that out, if it'll focus on it, and put it on that. I'm going to have to take those out, but i got to put some paper towel or something on there. And then I'm going to put those into there these are the tongs I used um, after they were cooked so I'm putting them over here are you gonna take the fries up all right and then I'm just gonna go ahead I'm gonna leave that like it is and I'm just gonna put this um, with the salt pepper and hot sauce Texas peat right that's what you got mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the only kind of hot sauce he likes. And I'm going to go ahead and just put these in for um, 28 minutes instead of doing it for the 18 because these are pretty large drumsticks. And I don't know if maybe uh, that might have been talking about the drumettes that were 18 minutes uh, because... I don't know if people normally cook these big things in here. Can you discard that? Okay, I've got that in there. And I put this here just in case I needed it. I'm going to turn it back on. It's still hot, but I'm going to put the time up to 28 minutes and start it. And I'm going to put some more fries in there. In that. And I'll be back. Um, I'm gonna make like a little hot sauce what is it, a wing sauce I guess you could say I don't know how to make wing sauce actually I just saw people put butter and hot sauce together but I'm gonna do it with 
Texas Pete hot sauce. I've got like a quarter of a stick of butter and I'm gonna put, well, if I can open it. Why is it so hard to open, Jeffrey? I don't know how much this is gonna be. How much is, probably about, we'll see. A quarter of a stick of butter is two tablespoons. Well, you know what? I'm gonna put the rest of that bottle in there because there's no more in there. It was about like that much in there. So maybe a quarter of a cup, maybe. I don't know, it wasn't even that much really. I'm gonna put the hot sauce, mix it with the butter. I had melted the butter mostly, but it has, the cold has, uh, of the hot sauce has started to make it go back together. And then this is actually Lee and Perrin's um, Worcestershire sauce, but I tore the thing off because I, when I picked it up, it slipped and I was afraid I was gonna drop my bottle. So I tore it off and threw it in the trash. So I'm gonna put maybe like a teaspoon of that in there. And we're gonna let Jeffrey taste it, see what he thinks. He's gonna be the guinea pig. Jeffrey, are you ready to taste this? See what you think? Do you want me to heat it up? Okay, I got you a little spoon. Do you think I should change it, or add something else, or put more? Oh, yeah, I think you like that. All right, we'll put this back in the refrigerator. Put you some more Texas Pete in the refrigerator. I don't know what we're gonna put this in, but he's gonna eat it with his dinner. We may have to heat it up a little bit. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Do you want me to put it in the oven so it can, like, not? Go back to like I don't know, do not do butter things. Let me put it in the oven. So we can do huh? Yeah. Alright. Okay, so I just stuck it in the oven because it's gonna keep warm. Now I gotta get these fries out. I think that they're done. They look done. Um, we got 19 more minutes on those. And if you want one of these air fryers, which I like it so far, I'll leave a link and a discount code down below. Um, so if you guys think you might like it, it's pretty neat. I think it's neat. It's got lots of settings. All right, so these are the hot sauce ones that I did. So, took those out. Those are the first ones I did with the Italian dressing. Got some broccoli, french fries, and that sauce stuff. So, that's what our dinner is for Tuesday night. And, um, I think it's going to be pretty good. I hope, anyways. Okay, so today is Wednesday night, and we're having cheesesteak sandwiches. This is something that... I don't know how many years ago I started doing I don't I didn't get the recipe from anybody I just started doing it I don't know if it's the proper way or not but I don't think I've shared it on my channel and if you'd ever like to see it let me know and some steak fries we have Havarti and Gouda and some hamburger buns that's what we're gonna use for the cheese steak sandwiches and just regular cheese and then ketchup and mustard because Jeff likes mustard on his cheesesteak and tater. ketchup for huh on, my tater. on his taters <laughs> he likes it on the potatoes taters too and anyways ketchup for the potatoes anyway and Selena's having mashed potatoes okay so it's Thursday night and we're having spaghetti and meatballs and this is meatballs that I had cooked and frozen they're in the we got too much sauce but that's okay and then we made cheesy garlic bread out of some hamburger buns that we had. So that is dinner for tonight. 
Okay, it is Friday night and we are having burgers. These are the ones you get from Sam's. I think they're the sirloin burgers. I air fried them tonight just to see if we would like that. We have buns and Noah's having some chili cheese corn chips, different kinds of cheese, some lettuce, tomato, and onion. We're gonna get some pickles out, some Doritos, and that's what we're having tonight is burgers and chips. Hey guys, I know this is not a dinner item, but it could be something you have after dinner. <laughs> anyway, today I thought I would share how that I make my own coffee creamer. Um, up until, I don't know, I started doing this probably six or seven months ago. I'm not sure really. And only one time since then have I bought coffee creamer and that's just because I had a coupon and it was on sale and it was just like super duper cheap and it was a brand that I knew all of the ingredients in it. It was very clear about the ingredients and there were no artificial ingredients. So I decided a while back that I just wanted to start making my own coffee creamer. So I'm going to show you today what I use is just three ingredients, super easy, and I'll tell you a couple of alternatives you can use if you don't have certain parts of it. Okay, so what you need to make this creamer is a quart jar or some sort of vessel that you want to make it in. I always make it in quarts because the flavor of it is just where I want it when I do it like this. Um, because the size of whatever jar you use is going to make a difference. Um, I use, sometimes I don't use this, sometimes I don't use it at all, but I use vanilla extract half and half and condensed milk. Um, like I said, sometimes I don't use the vanilla because I just have plain, just sweetened creamer. Sometimes I want vanilla creamer and I decided this week I will do vanilla creamer just so that I can show you guys how I do it. But it's really easy. All I do is open a can of condensed milk and you can look at the ingredients on everything and see what's in it um, and know exactly what you're using. Now am I a complete health nut? Wait a minute, let me go ahead and do this top first and do everything right no I'm not but I'm trying to do better and little steps is better than no steps I guess you could say but I will make this creamer up once a week and then um I'll have it all week this is what happens when you wash your cans. <laughs> it was still a little bit wet. Always wash your cans. Please wash your cans. We don't know what's been crawling on them. But I was going to try to show you the ingredients of the confectioner's, uh, not confectioner's sugar, condensed milk. Um, let's see. And it does say refrigerate after opening, which you will do that. But hopefully you can see it. It's just milk and where's it at right there milk and sugar that's all that's in this i was going to try to show it to you but that i don't want the paper in here or i wouldn't worry about taking that off anyway whole can of condensed milk and i have also found that this creamer is cheaper than what i was spending on other creamer Especially if I don't put the vanilla in it, but it's cheaper than what I was spending on any of those other creamers you can buy and I like the way it tastes better now. I mean in the beginning I was trying different things and you know adding different flavor and stuff and I found that I didn't like any of that and just the simple um condensed milk 
and half and half were enough. And I do try to get all of this out. And this <laughs> can sticking to me. All right, so a can of condensed milk, a half to a whole tablespoon of the vanilla extract. I don't know why I'm shaking that. I just have a habit of shaking things up. I'm gonna use about three quarters of a tablespoon of vanilla. And then I fill it the rest of the way with half and half. Now, I said I was gonna tell you some alternatives that you could use. Um, I always sniff my half and half milk or heavy cream or whatever. I was gonna tell you some alternatives you could use other than half and half. Now, I don't know about the condensed milk, but if some other things you can use instead of the half and half, you can use whole cream, I mean, you know, cream. You can use milk. Um, I like the half and half because, I don't know, I just like it. It's a little bit thicker than regular milk but it's um i don't know it's just i like it and plus it's cheaper than whole than whipping cream but you can use whipping cream and another thing you can use i have done is i have used um one of those little cans it's about the size of this maybe it's a little smaller than that a little can of the cream that uh let's see i usually find it in the oh uh, let's see what section is it the latino section of the store i guess the spanish section i don't know what it's called anyway the place where you find all of the different um spices for mexican food or whatever and you can use those little cans. I think they're made by Nestle. But whenever I did, oops, when I did use those cans, uh, I used them because I had bought them for my prepper pantry. And I ended up not using them. Like, there was no reason. For, anyway, they were going to expire. So I used one can of that, one can of condensed milk, and then the rest was half and half. So that was a way you can do it. But I don't know if y'all can tell, this is thicker than regular half and half. You know, it's thick, it gets thicker because of the condensed milk. But this is just a perfect alternative to the other, you know, creamers and stuff. And I know exactly what's in it. I know, you know, what I put in it. There's no words I can't pronounce or read. It's all just simple ingredients. And then what I do is just close it up. And I'll have this for the week. And um, every day before I use it, I'll give it a little shake. I'll just shake it a little bit. And then I'll put it in my coffee. Just like I would any store-bought creamer. And I like it a lot. It's a lot better to me than other types. So, thought I'd just share that. Along with my what's for dinner this week. Okay, so while I'm making my coffee, I did think that I might want to tell y'all um, another reason why that I like to make my own creamer. Usually creamer, when I buy it, it's anywhere from four to six dollars is how much I was paying for it, but I'd get the bigger things too. But um, it would cost me more to buy the creamer already made with all the stuff in it that I can't pronounce. And um, this way, because the half and half lasts me about two weeks, this way, it costs me anywhere between $2 to $2.50 to make my own creamer. It's not um, as expensive. So I wanted to tell you guys that 
is another perk of doing it and you can always add other flavorings to it like if you want to have mint flavored like peppermint flavored for you know christmas time and all of that you could get peppermint extract and add that to it um if you wanted to have the pumpkin spice add pumpkin spice to it you could add lots of flavors to that that's just the plain basic actually the plain basic wouldn't even have the vanilla in it but that's the plain basic with vanilla <laughs> But that's a jumping off point for making your own creamer. And usually I have this stuff in my house already. So just wanted to tell you guys the amount it costs me about how much it costs. And it's just, like I said, I'm not doing everything perfect with my health. I'm trying to do things better. I still eat things I shouldn't. I still drink sodas. But I am making steps toward healthier. And one of those things I'm doing is trying to get some of the things out of my diet. Yes, I still buy convenience foods because it seems like my family can't live without it. I don't understand it. A lot of these convenience foods that I do buy, they're not even for me. I don't even eat them. So, like cereal and stuff. I'll buy cereal for me and I'll never eat it. But anyway, my coffee's ready. And let me get it out of the Keurig. My coffee's ready. And all I do is I have my coffee here. And yes, I drink a big one. It's the only one I have all day, most days. And it's got about that much. It's about a little over three quarters of the way full. And I just fill it up, not all the way, because if you put it all the way, you can't put the lid on it. And I have to have the lid. That's why I like these cups, because I'm afraid I'm going to dump coffee everywhere. <laughs> and y'all, I'm going to tell you what to do. I get my coffee and my breakfast, and I go and I watch Fallon, and I watch Tiffany, and I watch other ladies. Well, there's several Tiffany's, but I watch the videos that I didn't see last night. I will have my breakfast and watch a few videos while I'm doing it and then I'll get to doing whatever else I've got to do like editing or filming or just plain housework I'm caught up on laundry right now I only have about a half a load and I'm not gonna mess with that until tomorrow because I won't need to wash the things today so and tomorrow I'll have a full load but anyway um I'm caught up in well, there's a few things in the sink. That's from Jeff's breakfast and me doing this coffee creamer. But I'm just, you know, I don't have a lot to do today other than um, empty the dishwasher and little things. Just little things that I have to do. But Mondays, which is today is Monday, that's usually my getting a lot of things edited day. <laughs> because um, I filmed things over the weekend and stuff like that. What happened there? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I'll see y'all. Hey guys, it's Saturday night and I should have finished this video up last night because we're having leftovers tonight. Um, we've got some leftover chicken legs and some spaghetti and some steak sandwich stuff. We need to just go ahead and eat that, get it out of the refrigerator so we're doing leftover night. That's a great way to have a no waste cooking no waste in your meals and um like i have said a lot of different times we do leftovers on purpose we cook extra for those days that we want to be able to have less cooking done and um be able to like on busy days so we do that on purpose we have it at least once a week most weeks is we have leftovers so tonight is leftover night that is the end of our video i hope you enjoyed it if you did go ahead and hit the like button if you like my channel go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified whenever i upload leave me a comment down below tell me what you had for dinner this week or break as i was saying before my battery died i should have checked it before i got started um leave me a comment down below tell me what you had for dinner breakfast lunch whatever kind of meal you want 
to tell me about this week if you want to tell me at all tell me what you're having tonight i don't know just you know because People who read the comments get ideas from you guys just as well as they get ideas from me and I get ideas from y'all and stuff like that. If there's ever anything that you would like to see me cook that is on my menu plan and I haven't cooked already or maybe I can just cook it over again and that's fine. Um, let me know that in the comments below as well. If you know anybody who would like to see a video like this, go ahead and share it. And remember, don't take any wooden nickels and be sweet.